Every year, coaches, athletic trainers, and parents strive to extol the benefits of sports participation to our young athletes. We teach sportsmanship, teamwork, and the health benefits of exercise. Along with the benefits comes risk. Some risks are acceptable and some are not. The challenges of managing an injury correctly can have a significant impact on recovery, return to play, and lifelong consequences. Recent research and media attention on concussions are showing us that being informed, identifying and managing a potential concussion situation correctly can significantly improve the outcome and minimize the impact of this potentially devastating injury. In this video, leading experts will introduce you to what you need to know about concussion before your season begins to help you make informed decisions. Not all of his concussions were sports related. He ended up having five. Three were from just being a kid. A trampoline, a tire swing, and a car accident. Uh, the two that he sustained in hockey, um, one was just they collided at the shoulder level. After my hit, I remember skating off the bench and I fell a few times and I went to the wrong bench at first and then I crawled back to our bench and sat in and then Dr. Rudolph attended to me and I don't remember anything after that. I knew we'd have a long road ahead of us for recovery. My biggest concern is what does this future hold? The brain of a student athlete at the high school level is very different than the brain of an NFL pro player and that repetitive concussions can cause long-term learning problems, long-term memory problems, and returning to play while the brain is still cognitively impaired can lead to a, a potential for a second impact syndrome. I didn't know it was a concussion at first. I just thought it was kind of, my parents always said, you got your bell rung. That's what I kind of thought it was, but I've never, at my first concussion, I didn't know what a concussion was. Concussion, or mild traumatic brain injury, is medically defined as a complex pathophysiological process affecting the brain, induced by traumatic biomechanical forces. What does this mean? A concussion is a change in the neural activity in the brain. The brain communicates with itself through electrical and neurochemical signals, and when we have this kind of a force uh, trauma, it disrupts that communication, and when that happens, we have all sorts of symptoms. You do not need to hit your head to have a concussion. I think of a concussion as more of a functional uh, injury as opposed to a structural injury. Well, recognizing a possible concussion starts with recognizing a hit that may be potential to cause a concussion, meaning a head-to-head -head contact that may occur or, a, or an athlete falling. Recognizing the common signs and symptoms of a concussion begins with looking at three of the categories concussions can affect. How they feel or act emotionally, how they think, remember, or process information. What the athletes feel or do physically. Uh, it's important to remember that over 90% of uh, concussions don't involve loss of consciousness and that's not uh, necessarily expected for a diagnosis to be made. Concussions are different from any other injury in that oftentimes signs and symptoms aren't outward in their appearance. They may do very well the first 15 minutes and you test them 45 minutes later and they may do very poorly. In summary, if they are diagnosed with a concussion, they need to see a healthcare provider in order to return to play. Well, the bottom line is if you're not sure, then you need to hold them out. I mean, as the WIA and medical staff have been saying, when in doubt, you got to hold the athlete out. Um, it's better to be on the safe side than not because symptoms can be very minimal in the beginning and advance and what you thought wasn't actually was. So the best case scenario is if you don't know, then just leave them out. Athletes need to take themselves out of the game and we try to teach them that. And it's very tough because they want to play. And 
then after that, they need to either see who's providing the medical coverage for that event, or their school's athletic trainer, their school nurse, or their primary care provider. So you treat a concussion by what we call brain rest. Treatment of a concussion uh, is rest. Rest and management of the symptoms. Uh, there's no exercises, there's no rehabilitation, there's no medication uh, for the treatment of the injury. We may use medication to help manage a headache, uh, for example, uh, but really it's rest and working through uh, the recovery and being careful not to push the body too hard at any time. I'm often asked if uh, falling asleep is of concern uh, after a concussion, and it's, it's not so much the going to sleep as it is whether the person is arousable. The person is going to need to sleep. Uh, it's important the body needs rest, uh, and certainly initially uh, the, the evening uh, of the uh, injury, often uh, physicians will recommend that you wake the person periodically throughout the night. The concern is not that the person's sleeping, it's to be certain that they can be aroused. There's a variety of activities that we uh, want to limit uh, while, a, well, while a student athlete is recovering, and this includes screen time. Uh, text messaging, uh, playing video games, any of these activities are going to uh, stress the brain uh, and th that's a form of mental exertion and we really need to limit it. Um, it's potentially going to exacerbate symptoms uh, and what we want to uh, avoid is any kind of roller coaster of symptoms that are going up and down. What happens if you have a concussion, neurons within the brain are not talking to each other the way they're supposed to. So if you add more stimulation to them, which our everyday life is filled with a lot of stimulation, even when someone does not have a concussion, you're making the brain try to work harder. Uh, a concussion can affect a, a person's life in many ways, uh, including school, uh, their driving uh, as well as work. Uh, certainly school is, is typically the first activity that we're looking to for a student athlete to return to. Once an athlete is held out because of concussion-like symptoms, the decision to return to play is a medical decision. I make their decision based on how they are doing now and I have to look at what are they going to be like 20, 30 years from now. Um, I'm not a medical trained person and neither are most coaches. And it has to be cleared that way. And if there are signs of a concussion, then we have a process of going through with that. Meaning there's a, a six step phase that an athlete needs to go through to get back to be able to play. And if they can pass and graduate through all those steps and come back to play, then, and the medical staff deems them eligible to, then that's the process that you have to, have to follow. It's about making sure that they can participate in a healthy way and a positive way. I explain it into two parts. Number one, their physical symptoms have to have cleared, meaning that they do not have any headaches or dizziness, and we all get headaches, but within reason. So they complete a symptom scoreless. Then they have to not get any symptoms with exertion because you may not have symptoms at rest, but exerting yourself such as weightlifting, aerobic workouts could exert symptoms. Once the physical symptoms have cleared, then we go into the neurocognitive testing, such again as impact. Impact is a computerized test that assesses very similar findings such as memory, learning. And often these athletes, for example, many of our athletes at our schools have had baseline testing. And then as a team physician, I'm trained to interpret these tests and compare them to their baseline. So the emphasis is if there's any doubt, just hold them out and reevaluate. In the state of Wisconsin, if an athlete is deemed to have a concussion during an event, they are not allowed to return to play on the same day to either practice or game situations until evaluated. When a person is recovering uh, from a concussion, uh, basically the brain is uh, attempting to fix itself uh, and, and balance the uh, neurochemical and electrical signals. Uh, and if we get hit a second time when this is already uh, dysfunctional, uh, it just taxes the brain even more uh, than the first time and uh, can create uh, further problems. Second impact syndrome is a very, very dangerous thing. If you're not fully recovered, it can, it can hurt you a lot more than what you expect. And I made the mistake of 
trying to go back early and getting frustrated with myself. And it's for the benefit of your health and you don't want to be brain mush when you're older. Continuing to play while symptoms of a concussion are still active and experiencing another hit, even a minor one, can lead to significantly prolonged symptoms, paralysis, and even death. It's not worth losing, a, missing a game over. Since I haven't had a concussion within the last two or three years, I have had the time to realize that I have symptoms from it yet. Um, I'm very sensitive to lights. Um, I cannot stay in the room for more than five, ten minutes with very loud bass, deep bass, and it, this, the music, it always, it always rushes my head and I get really, really pounding headaches and they stick with me. And if I develop a headache like that from overstimulation, it sticks with me for a few weeks, maybe months. Um, I also lost a lot of my memory skills. I have very, very, very terrible short-term memory loss. Professionally, we've learned that um, concussion is unlike any other injury that we deal with. Uh, the course of recovery from concussion is very individualized uh, because everybody does react differently to the initial injury and the subsequent progression of events that occurs following that in their own bodies. Um, scientifically we've learned that there are long-term consequences to concussion, especially repeated concussion, therefore it's um, critical for us as healthcare professionals that we make sure the athlete has fully recovered from a concussion before we send them back into the event. It is said that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Coaches teach proper techniques and sportsmanship and make sure equipment is up to date. Athletic trainers teach proper warm-up, conditioning, and care for injuries and help assure a safe return to play. Everyone plays a role in recognizing and caring for a concussion. Communication is the key. If you suspect that your athlete has had a concussion, talk to your coaches, athletic trainers, or medical provider. There's no way to eliminate the risk of concussion in any sport, but with proper recognition and care, we can keep the effects of concussion to a minimum and keep a minor problem from getting much worse. My greatest support was my mom. She was always the one that, no matter what the doctor said, she would look at it both ways and she looked look at the best for me and only me and what would happen if I went back on the ice, what could happen after that, if I went on back too early. We went through a lot together, but we, we came out strong and we're, we're doing awesome now. I guess the most um, advice I could give to athletes is take the impact test so you know where your baseline is. Not everybody's baseline is the same. If you do get hurt, if you're not pulled out of the game by a coach or by medical staff, pull yourself out because you're only hurting yourself, you're hurting your future. It isn't just a bump on the head. It isn't just your bell rung. It is serious. And take care of yourself. <laughs>